I found another article that I felt like reacting to and since you liked my first reacting to an article type video I thought that I would do another one. So I found earlier when I was on my Google Recommends page an article from Book Riot which was actually published today called 23 of the most influential fantasy books of all time and as you may know I like to read fantasy so I was interested to see what was on this list, how much of it I've read, not as much as I would like, and if there are any particular books that you would like to challenge me to read you can let me know. So these books are in chronological order from oldest to newest and let's get into it. I will of course link the article down in the description box if you would like to go and read it. I'm just going to look at the titles, I'm not going to read the article to you in full. So the first one from the 1800s is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll which is of course a classic, it's kind of absurdist fantasy, well not kind of, it's definitely absurdist fantasy. I have actually read this one, I've seen a number of adaptations of it. I quite like it, it's one of my sister's favourites. Not one of my favourites, I'm not generally into absurdist literature in general but it's a classic for a reason, you know? Then in the 1900 to 1950s we have Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. This is actually not one of my preferred fantasy stories. My mum absolutely loves it and we therefore watched it a lot growing up and that's probably why it's not one of my favourites because I overwatched it when I was too young but it is a classic. There are so many adaptations of this, so many different versions of this story. I did start listening to a dramatised audiobook version of it and I just got a little bit bored unfortunately but it is definitely influential, there's no getting away from that. Also within that time period is The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White, again one that I have seen adaptations for, my personal favourite being of course the Disney version, but I haven't actually read this one and embarrassingly enough I don't think I actually knew that this was a book so maybe I should read that. I suspect that that's a what would be considered middle grade these days. Then we have another classic, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, again one that I haven't actually read but I have seen many adaptations. Shout out to anyone who grew up with the BBC adaptation which really has not aged well but we loved it at the time. The animatronics looking back at them now is actually hilarious. Then of course we have Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. This list would most certainly be incomplete without Lord of the Rings on it. Clearly this was a very influential for a lot of epic fantasy tropes. I don't think you could ever have a list of influential fantasy books without having this on there. Now having said that, I have actually DNF'd this particular book several times, I don't actually know how many times. I The farthest I've ever made it is halfway through The Two Towers and I've just never made it further than that. Tolkien's writing style just really isn't my cup of tea but I have of course seen the adaptations and I've, I've read The Hobbit multiple times and I really like that one. I think it's just this particular story was a little bit too dense for me personally but definitely a super influential one. Then we have A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly. Joanna, I apologise. I know that you speak French. You can correct me in the comments if you like. This one is an interesting inclusion on this list because I think that it probably is pretty influential but it's not a book that I hear spoken about a whole ton. I've definitely heard of it. I haven't personally read it but yeah I don't, I don't know that it's necessarily got as much pop culture around it as these others that we've had so far do. So maybe as we start to get more modern we'll start to see that slightly less. Then we have Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. Again one I haven't read but I do know that this one was hugely influential on Brandon Sanderson's writing so it makes sense that it's here and I definitely want to try 
and McCaffrey at some point. I am trying to go through the backlist of classic fantasy and particularly classic fantasy written by women so I'd be interested to pick this one up and of course it's dragon fantasy so that is attractive in and of itself. And then we have a wizard a Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Again, one that I haven't read, but I have heard tons about. I've seen it recommended so many times within the classic fantasy genre. I think it's really interesting because Ursula Le Guin is probably better known for her sci-fi works, but actually this is probably one of her earlier novels and it is super popular. Moving now into the 70s and 80s, the first one we have is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Now I feel like people are going to come for me with this, but I have neither read the book nor watched the film, but I do know that people love the film. I don't know how many people who love the film have read the book, but don't, don't hurt me. Then we have Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Not surprised to see this here at all. It is a staple, particularly in classic black fantasy. I haven't actually got around to this one yet, but it is one that I want to give a go. I did try Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler and it just didn't really work for me in terms of themes, but I definitely still want to try Kindred out, although I did think that it was more sci-fi than fantasy, so not sure about that. Then we see Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones on the list. Love to see this. The film by Studio Ghibli is one of my favourite films of all time. I really liked the book as well, but it is quite different from the film. And actually, I kind of want to reread it because I read it sort of in between various things a few years ago, and I don't feel like I really gave it the time that it deserved. So, this is one I definitely want to revisit. But I think it's a pretty great middle grade fantasy and I can definitely see why it would make it onto this list. Then we move into the 90s and noughties and of course we have A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Naturally this one had to be here. This is probably one of the biggest fantasy series ever. Everybody knows about Game of Thrones whether you've read it or watched it. You know what it is. I have neither read it nor watched it. It's grim dark fantasy, which really is just not my genre. I knew about the TV show before I knew about the books and I started watching episode one and I just wasn't feeling it. So I didn't carry on watching and I had no desire to pick up the books. So this is one that I haven't personally experienced, but I do know that apart from that final season, <laughs> everybody loves the TV show and the books are hugely popular as well. Although, I'm sure that many people would prefer it if uh, the author would hurry up and write that next book. So moving on. <laughs> then we have an interesting one. So next we have Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And while I agree that this was incredibly influential and much as the books might not be fantastic and might have quite a lot of problematic content, I don't think there's any escaping the fact that they that was a hugely influential series, both the books and the films. I don't know that I would necessarily classify this as fantasy. I would put it in the paranormal romance genre and more so on the romance side than the fantasy side. So I'd put it sort of the subgenre under romance of paranormal romance rather than the subgenre under fantasy of paranormal romance, if that makes sense. So super influential, definitely has fantasy elements, but I don't know that it's necessarily best placed on this particular list, especially considering what else is on this list. Then we move into the tens and the twenties. So the first one is Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor, and I actually haven't heard of this one. It says that it's a science fantasy novel, which is interesting. I've heard of Nerdy Okorafor, but not this particular book. I know her more from the Binti series, which unfortunately I haven't got around to yet, but it is on my 
forever long TBR but I'll have to check out this one as well and I'd be interested if any of you have read it let me know what you thought. Then we have Akatar by Sarah J Maas. Again I would put this in the paranormal romance category rather than fantasy although this time I'd put it on the fantasy subgenres list rather than the romance subgenres list because I do think it's more fantasy than Twilight is I liked these books I didn't love them but I do see why they would be on this list because I think that they started to bring that fantasy romance thing back into the kind of more mainstream fantasy genre which is nice to see although if you've watched this channel for a minute then you'll know that I take issue with people categorising this particular series as smutty or steamy because I really just don't think that these books are smutty or steamy. There is just not enough sex going on in them to fall under the category but hey that's a whole other discussion. And then we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin definitely super influential. This one is sort of dystopian style fantasy I suppose, very dark. Definitely check the trigger warnings. I, I have to say that every time I mention this book because it is just so dark and as a consequence of that I haven't actually continued with the series because I feel like I need to be in a really really good mental headspace before I do that because of how dark this first book was and usually that doesn't bother me but it was just a lot uh, but yeah 100% definitely influential and it's a lot of people's favourites or in a lot of people's top tens and I think for good reason it's a fantastically written book but yeah be careful with it. Then we have An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I liked this book but I feel like if we were going to include a Middle Eastern inspired style fantasy book on this list then I would say that City of Brass is probably more influential or at least more popular than An Ember in the Ashes. I did really like that series, I've actually read the whole series now and I liked book one and the rest of the books were kind of just okay. I quite liked the last book, A Sky Beyond the Storm, but I don't know that the rest of the series really matched with how good An Ember in the Ashes was and also again it's slightly more focused on the will they won't they forbidden romance type tropes rather than the fantasy tropes. It's still definitely a fantasy book but yeah I don't know that I necessarily vibe with this particular choice. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller. I feel like I would have put Song of Achilles on here rather than Circe. I haven't read either of them but in terms of me hearing people talk about how amazing they were and them influencing them to read other fantasy books I definitely hear more about Song of Achilles rather than Circe. I don't really know much about Circe for that reason but Madeline Miller definitely deserves a place on this list. I think that that cross between historical classics stories and fantasy really brings a whole new set of people into the genre so I'm not surprised to see that there. The next one I am surprised to see there though that's Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Now I think this was this is probably here because it was from my recollection the first kind of really big African in style African inspired fantasy book series that was hugely popular so I can see it for that but the second book didn't do very well most people didn't really enjoy it so I think it's an interesting choice I can see why it's here because again was really the first super popular African inspired fantasy that I can remember that was kind of mainstream and really got a lot of push on it which is amazing but I don't know that it's necessarily the best example of that it just had really good marketing I guess. Then we have Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is one I haven't got to yet but I do definitely want to. This one is super popular. Loads of people love this one especially on the book to net. 
and I can see why this is here for, for sure. I, it's written by an indigenous author which is great and I think that it's really very different. I can't really speak to that because I haven't read it yet but from what I've heard it's a very different in style to a lot of other fantasy books that are out there so I suppose time will really tell with how influential a lot of these are because they're so new. I mean Black Sun only came out in 2021 so I don't know that we can necessarily call it influential yet but I could definitely see it being. Then we have The Deep by Rillis Rivers Solomon. Again not one I've read but same thing as with Black Sun. It's come out so recently that I don't know we can tell that it's influential just yet but again I can definitely see it being. It kind of hovers in that space between fantasy and horror. It's on the shorter side, slightly more literary in style from what I've heard so again can totally see it becoming influential but I don't know if we're there yet. The next one is interesting. We've got These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Now I imagine without reading the content of the article in detail that this is here because it's that mashup of retelling and historical fiction and fantasy because it's a little bit Romeo and Juliet, it's what was it 1920s Shanghai and it's monsters and a, a, some sort of virus and that kind of thing. I personally didn't like this one, I DNF'd it. I don't tend to like historical fiction in nearly any of its guises, with Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell being a notable exception to that, but for the most part historical fiction fantasy doesn't tend to work for me, so that's partially why. But I do also think that this is an interesting one, because if we were going to pick something that was in the historical fantasy spectrum, I don't know that this is necessarily going to be the most influential out of the ones that were released within the last couple of years. I can specifically think of She Who Became the Sun, which came out last year, which has been pretty hyped up and pretty popular, and that definitely fits more solidly into the historical category. So, I don't know. Bit of a weird one. Then we have Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Again, so relatively new that it's difficult to say whether this will be influential, but it is one that I really enjoyed. It sits quite nicely at the sort of upper end of the YA spectrum. It's sort of starting to verge on adult, I thought, and that definitely is a, a, a bit of a trend. I was recently in a video, a live show, on Joanna's channel where we discussed YA and adult and whether or not there needed to be sort of more categories within that and I think this is a perfect example of why you kind of need a category for the younger end of YA because I don't know that necessarily a lot of the themes in this one would hit particularly well for a 13 year old, they just might not really pick up on it. It might not be as enjoyable for them for that reason but I do see why this is here because it is on that upper end of YA, it's a King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table type retelling and it's definitely a really great book but again way too soon to decide if it's influential. And that's it, those are all the books on this list. I'm very surprised or perhaps this is just because I'm obsessed with Brandon Sanderson but I am very surprised to not see any Brandon Sanderson on this list. I'm also surprised not to see Wheel of Time on this list. I feel like that's a pretty big one especially recently and a lot of people do credit Wheel of Time with a lot of the the big sort of fantasy tropes that people are still playing off of now so I definitely think that Wheel of Time should have been there and I would personally have put Brandon Sanderson on there somewhere but I do think for the most part especially with the older titles that were on this list it's done pretty well. The newer titles I feel like there's not much to base that on just yet. It was really just a plug for some of those newer books which I'm not opposed to because there were some great ones on there. But you'll have to let me know. What do you think of this list? Again I will link the article down in the description box if you would like to go and read it for yourself. And that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks! Bye.